mirages appear when you drive along a, a road on a very hot day and the tarmac, the asphalt on the road, is very hot so you wouldn't want to put your bare feet on it. And suddenly, on a flat road, if you're driving in the right direction, you can see the sky as if there were a puddle in the road, reflected in the road, so that the light from the sky comes down and seems to hit a puddle and be reflected up into your eye. This is called an inferior mirage because it's below the horizon, it's underneath the horizon, it's called inferior. I mean, it's, it's blooming wonderful. It's not inferior in that sense, it's because it's below. And the explanation for these observations was given by Pierre de Fermat, the famous French mathematician. He was a brilliant mathematician and he wrote to somebody and said um, the reason light travels in these funny lines is it doesn't travel in the straight line as people would imagine it goes along the path which takes the least time so the the question this raises is under what circumstances could this possibly happen well imagine that light travels at different speeds and different parts of space it's just as though you were going to another place through a muddy field and if you traveled in a straight line through this muddy field it would slow you down because it's so boggy alternatively you go on a footpath in a detour to come around from the other side and that might be the quicker and more sensible route well in the same way light could find that in some medium such as water or air it prefers to go in a region where it can speed up because then it can get there quicker. A practical example, I'm going to talk about a car on a road uh, travelling along on a very hot day such that the tarmac gets inordinately hot, you wouldn't want to tread on it, and the air next to the tarmac gets very hot uh, and as a result it expands, whereas the air further up is cooler and as a result it's, it's slightly more dense. Now light travels faster in this less dense air than in this cooler air. So imagine this is a bit of the sky, actually it's my filing cabinet, and the light is, and I'm going to exaggerate this because it's not on this scale, the light comes down from there, gets near this hot air, and it rises up to my eyes. And this path takes advantage of the fact that the light is travelling faster near the ground than up in the air. And compared to any other path that it might come slightly higher up or further down, this is the path which is locally going to take the least time. So what I'm going to see as I look at, the cam at my filing cabinet, I'm going to see the sky or above it. But if I look down here, this ray bends up, comes into my eye, and I see it as if there were a mirror on the floor, and this mirror is reflecting the sky into my eye. There's another kind of mirage not an inferior one but a superior one and now in this case you look at the horizon and it's maybe the sea and you can't see anything there but the light now is bent the other way because just above the sea's surface it is very cold it might be the polar ice caps or the region near there and further up in the air the air is hot so instead of bending this way it now bends that way now the earth is spherical so we can see things from beyond the actual horizon and they rise up, come up into the atmosphere and come down again and as I look up at it, it seems to be floating in the sky. This is the superior image, it comes above the horizon. People called it in Italy the Fata Morgana because it was seen in Italy in the Straits of Messina and they thought these wonderful shapes that they were seeing were created by a, a witch Morgan Le Fay, the, the half-sister of King Arthur, and she was producing these funny shapes in the sky that they couldn't explain. So Fermat came up with this, this idea, but it was rubbish by everybody. They couldn't believe that light, an inanimate object or concept, could actually have a brain so as to be able to work out which path would take the least time. That doesn't make any sense. The only problem with this criticism is that this idea works. It fits all known experiments. So although intellectually you might think this is stupid, every time you use it to make a calculation it explains what you see. Here's an example on a practical level. I'm going to talk about the reflection of light off a mirror. So imagine this is a mirror and I'm standing up, oh I'll make this in a human being over there, and the light goes from this person to that person and it can go in any sort of path and I'll work it out the path which takes the least time. And you draw all these paths out 
and the one that takes the least time is a symmetrical one, where the angle of incidence in here is equal to the angle of reflection. This is one of the, the well-known laws of Snell. Now then, of course light will go along this path, but this path along here, going from one to the other, is the one that's going to take the least time compared to all the other paths locally that there are. And that's why we don't see a million reflections. We just see the one in the mirror down here, and we see the other one directly in front of us. So you are seeing the sky in the ground, and you're seeing the sky directly. So you only see these two images. So now you understand that the light can travel from one to the other in a direct path, but it can also go on this path. And what's happening when there's a mirage is the light will come from this figure and come down and go up as a parabola, like that. And other paths are possible around here, but they don't contribute, just as these other paths don't contribute, and only that one adds up to create an image that you can see. Here is an ordinary mirage. There is the road. There is the bit acting as a mirror. So you can see this blue car reflected in the road. Imagine the light not coming from the sky, but coming from this car. And the light coming towards us from this car is coming down and then turning up and coming up at an angle. So we actually are seeing a picture of that car turned upside down in the road, acting as if it were a mirror.